Hello, my friends. How are you doing tonight? It's Carpo here. Uh, I made a few videos earlier, and I never uploaded them, and I decided I was just going to start over and make another one. Uh, I waited too long. If I wait more than an hour, I just think, it's just cheesy shit. What's the point? And you know, further down the road, in my later years in life, <laughs> I might look back and think, God, I wish I'd kept those recordings, but I don't think I will. Because I have several of you know, memories, pictures, and videos, and ideas, and uh, I have more than enough shit on YouTube to, uh, to go back and look at, at least. So here I'm sitting. Turns out the lights are poised kind of funky, so the green screen turns into kind of a black screen. I kind of like that. A little bit more prominent. I had several things I wanted to talk about, but was unsure how I was going to tackle this. I've been doing some things today, uh, I was busy. I had the issue with my mom. I mentioned a video the other day that some crazy bitch had kicked her out with the 72-hour notice and stole her kratom and, and said she wouldn't give it back. Um, that night, the cops were called about these tubs of pills she had that were these capsules that I'd given her. The lady was basically scared. We showed up to get her stuff tomorrow, the next day, and the lady wasn't there. Um, she'd left for the day, obviously, and uh, we got the stuff. It was very uneventful. We loaded up. It was great. We left. And... Um, the minute we walked in, her two tubs of Kratom were sitting there on her, you know, by her door. Um, the lady had thought it through and realized. And that's one of, the, a very crucial thing, you know, if a person, it's important to relax and think about things before you go posting something, let's say. It's easy to get angry and post something on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere, and then think, God, why did I do that? It's something I don't do. I don't use Twitter myself. But uh, I, I definitely don't ever drunk post or, you know, drunk video, like on YouTube. And you'll notice some people at night will get it out and they'll get in these modes where you can tell they were drunk or, you know, drunk high, whatever it might be. Anyway, we don't always mean what we say and, and, and you know, things change. Uh, that's why it was good to sleep on the idea of... You know, it was easy to want to rebel to the lady because she was such a rude bitch and took my mom's stuff, stole from her, kicked her out illegally. And all my mom wanted to do was leave a little note that said, cluck, cluck. And I even said, no, we shouldn't even do that. We should walk out, clean it. She vacuumed. Um, and then we just left a little picture on the table that said, you know, love everyone, basically, something like that. It was the lady's picture. But she was a nutcase, not worth dealing with. And that's the thing. I found a lot of people aren't worth dealing with. <laughs> um, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere. A lot of things have taught me online that some people are just complete sob stories. Obsessed with... Well, let's say this lady was a social justice worker. She's one of those ones that's anti-coal, anti-pipeline, anti-mosquitoes, you name it. I mean, she's anti-anything that people are fighting for. Um, and I'm on the same team as a lot of people who are fighting injustice, but she takes it to the extreme. Uh, the example is she kicked my mom out because she smelled nail polish, even though it had been several hours, she claimed she smelled it in the house, and then it made her sick. But then when my mom came back the next day, the lady had been using oven cleaner, and the whole place just reeked like oven cleaner. So it's one of those things where it's a pick and choose. People are fucking nuts. And that will lead me, I guess, segue into the next part of my discussion here, which is uh, these symbols right here. Uh, I've been asked, you know, I wore this lab coat for Burning Man, which was uh, the regional Burning Man here, and the theme was science. So last year I bought a couple lab coats. And I wear this sometimes when I'm making a video, or I, I usually wear these when I'm doing my Kratom packaging and stuff. Just keep everything clean and... I uh, had uh, several people ask me, what is that symbol on there? Well, you may or may not, you should be able to see it from there. So this one right here is the Burning Man symbol, but they've asked me about this one. And every single time somebody asks me, I say, I don't know, whatever you want it to be. You know, it's kind of a tease, and I'll be honest, it's because I feel like some of the people that ask that are people who are obsessed with occult Illuminati, the Christians who are opposed to symbols and think that everything's negative. Um, not always, but some people, I've had them say, do you realize that these symbols are Illuminati symbols? And I would say, you know, you've got to grow out of that. 
the Illuminati, the Bavarian Illuminati, were just a small part of the 1700s, a small secret society. And there are plenty of secret societies out there. Freemasons, they're not a secret society. But many of these societies have used symbols. And therefore, a lot of people think that symbols are somehow evil. And I'd really love to dispel that myth. <laughs> symbols are powerful. Symbols remind you of things. Symbols are a way... They're nothing more than talismans. You can have plastic crystals. It doesn't matter. It's about your intention behind the object. A talisman doesn't have to be made of a particular material. But if you believe it does, then it does. Th these are my views, of course. I'm getting into my you know, subjective viewpoints and totally cool with that. Um, you know, I do have a mystical side to me and I, I believe the symbols have power. But, to get to the point, this particular symbol, which is a circle inside of a square, inside of a triangle, inside of another circle, it basically, it's the Philosopher's Stone. It's the symbol for the Philosopher's Stone. And um, the upper part of the circle represents the cosmos, or infinity, and the lower part represents the material world. And I won't get into details about the rest of it, but sometimes it can actually be much more pointed towards the top because the top half has to be larger than the bottom half and sometimes the top of the pyramid is not touching the top of the circle and what that represents is mankind's inability to connect quite to his divine self or to the cosmos to where we're almost there but never quite there and uh, it's fascinating stuff I mean when I got into like this book that I brought out, I don't really have anything I'm going to read out of it, but it's from the year 2000, so I've had it for 16 years. It's got astrology and, and theories and theology, you name it, everything. It goes from animals to the chemtrail dispute to laughter epidemics to the number 33. 33 is the 33 vertebrae. Jesus died in 33 AD. Perthorn for performed 33 miracles, 33 Islamic prayer beads, 33 degrees of Freemasonry. There's a huge list in here. And uh, I was obsessed with numbers and ideas and symbols. And for a while I thought, this is fascinating. You know, there's something to this. And so for years I would write down and draw connections. Like this is a connection of Kronos and Oranos and Zeus, Rhea, Gaia, Heracles, all the different gods and goddesses. I guess what I'm getting at is I've done my homework, to an extent. I'm definitely no expert on everything, or any one particular thing, but a little bit of everything, and I like to learn about these things, and I think that symbology is a very crucial aspect of human life. Metaphors, archetypes, we use them daily in all types of, you know, if you're not aware of the archetypes, you're not aware when you're being marketed to. You're not aware when you're being lied to big time by corporations, by the media, by movies. You're told you want things. You're told you need things. You're convinced you need diamonds, which came up earlier, and I was talking to somebody about that. It was a, a SciShow video about diamonds, and they were saying how... Uh, I figured maybe they would at least cover the fact that diamonds are worthless or that the De Beers had cornered the diamond market or that they were getting dump truck loads out but were only releasing as many as people were getting married each year to make sure that the market was good for them or that diamonds are completely worthless except for in industry. Um, nobody ever covers the important things but the symbolism of some things are, are so embedded in who we are. The diamond has become a symbol. And think about this. It's only been for like a hundred years that the cut diamond has really been what it is today. And people have been convinced that it's this ancient, you know, the greatest thing. No. People were into emeralds, diamonds, rubies, whatever they could get their hands on. But the market is always created by either the beauty, the usefulness. But ultimately it's a symbol. It's a metaphor. They're all metaphors. Thinking that a guy has to spend two months of his wages on a rock to prove he loves his wife. I feel sorry for people who fell for that. And I know a lot of people did. And I almost did. I bought a diamond ring when I was younger. When I first got engaged to my wife, um, 
I actually bought her an opal ring <laughs> from the stash, a head shop, um, a sterling silver and opal ring. But then when we went out to get our real engagement rings, yeah, we did. We originally got reasonably priced diamond, and uh, I got one with like a bunch of small diamonds, white gold. But it it was because we were in our early twenties, you know. And in today's world, we're like, whatever, <laughs> you know. An item is only what you attribute the value to it. If you have an old something that you have a you know a really attachment to that nobody else does, they don't understand. But it can mean a whole lot to you if it's something that your parents had. I was looking for an example around here because I have uh, things like my father's dog tags, my grandfather's World War II ring, um, you know, just little things that you end up thinking, oh, this is important to me, and then you ask yourself why. Well, because you're hanging on to the past, remembering certain things, but it's more than that. There's a talisman aspect to things. We kind of feel like they have power or energy. Like if it's our father's birthday, we wear something that he wore. And I think that there is something to that, but it's more the intention of the wearer and user. And in symbols, it's the same way. All symbols are what you make of them. Something as simple as a circle, it's obvious, you know. It's infinity. A circle is infinity. A circle is the cycle of life. I guess I should go through the basic shapes because everyone's going to perceive it their own way, but I'm going to give you my take on it. <laughs> but first, I'm going to take a drink and take a vape. A circle represents infinity. It's like the Ouroboros, which is the snake eating its tail. It's rebirth, regrowth, and many other things. <laughs> then we have the next shape, which is a triangle. It's the shape with the least amount of sides. And a triangle usually represents divinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There are several different ways to take it, but it's divinity, that the tri. Then we have four, and that's usually an earthly realm. That could be the four directions, the four cardinal directions, um, the four elements, you know. And then you get into five and six and seven, up to septenaries and things like that. But the most important are the ones up to the square. And uh, the penta generally represents spirit. So... Um, you get into six, I guess that could get into all different types of things. If Once you get to six, it's, it's like the merging of... It's the unity of male and female energies. This is why the Jews use the Star David, which is merely two triangles intersected. That's the unity. And seven is often septenaries, the seven, the days of the week, and whatnot. Um... And you get to nine, which is like this very sacred number. But I'm going to go now because I'll get into all these different weird things and ideas that I've been pondering over the years. And uh, I'm running out of time and I have a few things I want to do. Not only that, but I'm ready for dinner. So I'll talk to you all later.